Welcome back then. We are flirting with the 10,800 odd mark. A quick check on the options data because today is expiry. So let's pull up the 10,800 put. Now that's the one that's added close to 20 lakh shares. Yesterday, the premium on this particular strike was at around 70 rupees. Now that's come down to around 22 rupees. So for those, uh, you know, traders that are writing this particular strike at around 10,800 put, they are looking at defending around that 10,750 mark to around that 10,770 odd mark. You know, just taking a rough estimate out there. Yesterday it was at around 71 rupees. Today it's at around 22 rupees. So those writers, they're looking to defend a range uh, in that particular range. Now the 10,750 put as well, that's the second most active put. Now that's added roughly around 10 lakh shares as well. So the bulls, they are counting on at least this 10,750 odd level holding out. And that's why the premium of both these two strikes have come down quite a bit if you compare it with yesterday's close. So keep an eye out on both those two strikes. If you start seeing unwinding from the top, that could mean that in fact the bulls are getting a little jittery. But as of now, it appears 10,750 should hold out in this series by the time we wind up. 10,730 odd, that should be the mark you're looking at. But uh, let's tell you what brokerages are saying today. Manglam joins in. He has been going through all those brokerages. Uh... That <laughs> many brokerages now, you know. Yeah, Manglam's a good boy. He's been reading a lot of brokerages. Manglam, tell us, what all are you picking up? Uh, the one thing that I used to show is that people from Edelweiss, Aquarius, and they're Philip working Cam hard. They're, they're working the only ones like yeah. us. They're, yep. Uh, so they write, we read. That's all we have to do. <laughs> I tell you what. So we start with Edelweiss on Avas Financials. They've initiated coverage with a buy call, target price at 1014 a share. They say that the company has solid business credentials because they have stringent credit assessment and risk management. Add to that, they have a strong capital base as well. Hall, have, they have all the requisite ingredients to sustain, sustainably command premium valuation, which is why their uh, conviction on this stock. Aquarius, on the other hand, they've written on Gujarat Gas. They see a 15% EBITDA compounding growth over FI19 to FI21, and that reflects into their EPS, which would grow at a 32% CAGR, and that means a 400 basis points expansion in the company's return on equity. So with that, They've raised their target price from 718 to 774 odd rupees. Edelweiss Financials has also written on metals. They've said that the weak Chinese demand in the second half of 2018 and further uncertainties in 2019. So their best pick in the metal space remains Hindalco among the non-ferrous players. And finally, we have Philip Capital on Container Corp. They've done some calculations with regards to the cost savings that the company will do on account of reduced rail haulage charges for empty containers. So this would mean that their cost would decrease declined by about seven and a half rupees per kilometer. And add to that, they are projecting about 10 to 12 percent volume growth. So if that happens, the margins would maintain at current levels. Revenue growth would come by, and that is a positive for the company. They have a buy call with a target price of 900 on Container Corp. Okay, all right, Mangalam. Thanks so much uh, for that. But the IT space, that's one of the biggest gainers today. But ironically, uh, Nirmal Bang has come out with the note, and they're turning cautious. Yes, so they've downgraded the sector. And now, you know, even Nirmal Bang is uh, working today. So I think all <laughs> the Indians only are, uh, you know, slugging it out this <laughs> week as well as the next week but back to the IT sector um, so Nirmal Bang has turned cautious in the sector they were tactically positive in the sector since March of 2018 the key reason for that is the slowing US growth so they expect a soft landing in the US with a growth of zero to one and a half percent in terms of the GDP growth in 2020 they also see US BFSI witnessing pressure on the margins on the back of the inverted yield curve they see pressure on the cost structure in the US companies on account of tariffs, imp uh, tariffs levied on imports from China, which impacts the manufacturers and raises the cost pressure there. They also see uh, the inability of many of these companies to tap into the entire marketing budgets of the companies in a big way. And finally, automation, when it reaches a particular scale, it is also compressing the legacy services. So all these factors will result in uh, you know, the U.S. companies cutting down the kind of spend that they have on account of slower growth as well, which will hurt the Indian IT companies. So in fact, Nirmal Bang has taken a view that in F5, uh, 21 IT companies are going to see no growth. So that is the big statement coming out versus expectations of a mid to high single digit kind of growth for the markets. <clears throat> So if you pull up individual stocks, take for instance Infosys. So this year, they
They expect INFI to be within the guided range of 6 to 8 percent. Growth will accelerate in F520, but will completely flatten out in F521. Take a look at Wipro, for instance. This year, again, low single digits. In F520, some acceleration, but in F521, they see negative growth. Even for HCL technology, um, you know, this year it will be about close to a 9 percent growth, but in F521, it will drop all the way down to the 2.5 percent mark. And even in the mid cap end of trade, uh, companies like Mindtree have reported some solid growth uh, in this year. But, you know, even Mindtree, they expect negative growth to come through in F521. So that is the big call that Nirmal Bang is making that it's going to be a no industry growth for the IT sector in F521. They also go on to say that um, in 2018, the IT sector outperformed the Nifty by close to about 20%, and the key reason for that was an expansion in the PE multiple. But in 2019, they expect those PE multiples to contract as investors start recalibrating growth, and that will result in weakness in the stock. Also, capital return will have limitations of being a stock driver. Mid-caps, they believe, will have even you know, a greater value erosion because as the digital demand shifts from front-end to back-end, the traditional large Indian companies will be in a better position to capture the market. Um, so some very cautious statements coming out of Nirmal Bank uh, on the IT sector. So that said, today, uh, the IT stocks are doing well. And in fact, for the entire year, they have been one of the best performing indices with a rally of close to about 20-odd percent. We'll uh, slip into a very short break on that note. Up next, as we enter into 2019, we'll get you a rewind of how the steel sector has fared in 2018. Stay tuned.